Hello and welcome to Manipal Dubai studio. Today we have with us a very special guest, Dr. Krishnaswamy Kasturi Rangan. Dr. Kasturi Rangan is the Chancellor of Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi, Chairman of the Karnataka Knowledge Commission and a member of the Commission of Government, uh, sorry, Commission of the <laughs> Planning Commission of the Government of India. He is the former head of the Indian Space Research Organization and a former member of the Rajya Sabha. Hello sir, how are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, sir, the first thing I want to ask you, so you've had a very long and illustrious career which has had several achievements. I mean, I've read up on you. So what do you think has been the highlight of your career so far? Well, I never considered any specific thing as a highlight in my career because at a particular point, what I do is the highlight for that matter, <laughs> what are the career. So whether I did my doctorate and had my PhD got at, at a convocation or in, uh, launching a particular satellite with a particular rocket and developing it, or an early early work which was related to science mm -hmm. where I tried to look at some phenomena which was very revealing in terms of a new thing which appeared as a note in the Nature magazine or then developing the India's most advanced uh, launch vehicle, the geosynchronous la satellite yeah. launch vehicle which was a big challenge of lasting for nearly 10 years but then successfully culminated in a couple of successful launches. Each one of them were highlight at its own in its own way. And uh, but to me, if you put the sum total of the whole thing, it was a very eventful life, a very vibrant life and very satisfying one because every time you took up a challenge, it was much bigger than the previous one. Yeah. But the previous one, I could not have taken that challenge if I had not gone to the previous one. Yeah. So in that context, uh, there is a highlight in my life which are many point, may, at many uh, look at many phases mm -hmm. and at the same time, I think if, if you say the, fi the final highlight is the fact that I can sit back in retrospect and really savor everything that went in my life and very eventful and I think I consider that as the highlight not instead of specifically saying about it and if you, if you want to be very specific, my mentors like Professor Vikram Sarabhai, Dr. Sadish Dhawan and Professor U R Rao, they were really the ones who provided me with all this support and encouragement. And in a sense, the highlight of my association in life has been these three individuals uh, who, who did everything to pioneer the India space program. Okay, so let's uh, move on to something more education related. Uh, basically, science as a subject has been sort of confined to, you know, laboratories and classrooms. So what can we do to make it more relevant to the masses? Yes, I, th I think science has two components. One is the fundamental research. Mm -hmm. The fundamental research really produces knowledge and enrichment of the human society. It is the first step in a knowledge society. So the fundamental research is extremely important. You do research in the laboratory, make discoveries and sometimes inventions. This year there have been both inventions and discoveries for Nobel Prize winning scientists and then you publish it. But then this knowledge is the one that you start using it in applied research, right. where you start looking at a specific application of that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like if it is X-ray discovery of Ranjan, it became the X-raying the body. Yeah. Or if it is a molecular genetics, it then applies to looking at various kind of diseases and how do the genes transform mm -hmm. as a part of the disease. Mm -hmm. So these are all the applied research part of it. Then out of the applied research comes actual products and services which can then benefit the humanity mm -hmm. like developing a vaccine right. or a pharmaceutical or have new transportation system or a new energy system. Mm -hmm. So they are all the derivatives of the applied research but ultimately benefiting the society yeah. at the grassroots level. So it is a three step process right. of a research which enriches the society and creates a knowledge base use the knowledge base for research in related to the applications which will benefit the society and finally transfer this benefit, transfer this benefit through the so to the society. Mm -hmm. But each is done by a certain set of community right, right. which are not necessarily connected, uh, which should be connected in principle but sometimes it is not connected. Mm -hmm. That connectivity if you bring in, mm -hmm. then you have really the value of the science not only for enrichment but ultimately benefiting right, the society. Yeah. Okay, so again, in terms of education, I mean, you've experienced uh, education, I mean, the teaching of astrophysics on a national and an international level. So, can you draw a comparison between Indian and Western universities in the way that they teach? Well, yes, there, 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 there is a, uh, if you really look at some of the best Ivy League in, institutions in India, like IITs, mm -hmm. Indian Institute of Science, the pedagogy that they adopt is no different from what the Western system is. Right. And then the second part of it is the Western system provides more opportunities for students to navigate 
through various subjects so that they become kind of a total person a holistic person in even doing a research which may be limited in terms of the scope so here i think we need to strengthen the educational system in india compared to what you provide for example an mit provides enormous opportunities to navigate through social sciences humanities sciences engineering mm-hmm. and you come out with totally innovative thing the number of 80 90 nobel laureates they produce is not without reason yeah. so that part of the connectivity navigation and flexibility should be provided to the youngsters in the early phase of their life so that the best of the creativity and innovation that every human being has got uh, can be brought to the fore and which becomes an instrument for their future So uh, you've written over 200 research papers in the fields of astronomy, uh, space science, and its applications. So, what can universities like Manipal University, Dubai, do to you know further promote the studying of astrophysics? Well, there are many ways to do astrophysics studies. One is the theoretical astrophysics, where you need really pencil, paper, and your brain. Yeah. This is what like people like Professor Subramaniam Chandrasekhar, one of the most famous astrophysicists. Mm-hmm. who really predicted the neutron stars right. black holes the post relativistic characteristics of the universe all these and also very fundamental with respect to the mass of a white dwarf star so if you look at it this theoretical but you need to have tremendous amount of knowledge in terms of physics and other allied subject gravitation and so want to do that part of it this is possible in any university because right. you need to get some of the world authorities and plant them here ask them to seed the capability mm-hmm. and then work with the local ca- talents so that ultimately you can do the second thing that you can do is to use the systems that are going up in space you know nowadays several are several satellites cosmic background explorer x-ray astronomy satellite infrared astronomy satellite um, the ultraviolet astronomy satellite and india is going to launch next year an astrosat mm-hmm. which is a multi wavelength satellite system to look at an object in multiple wavelengths which right, is today right. possible only with different satellites so this kind of data that will come out of it you can prepare university students to receive this data this can be linked with india and so you yeah. manipal you can receive it mm-hmm. and they use this data to analyze this data and then you get some very interesting research output mm-hmm. coming out of analyzing this data so this is another way to because you don't have to invest in a huge satellite like that because it involves enormous technology and mm-hmm. techniques mm-hmm. that is not needed you can receive the data link it up so that you can any time access the data and then also use this data along with the other areas of data like you can use this this is an astronomy satellite which will work with optical to say x rays but you can radio astronomy telescopes and other types of telescopes so use that data also and then mix it up mm-hmm. so any time you try to do this kind of mixing and looking at patterns and so on you can always have a research output which could yeah. be important Definitely. as a contribution to the Definitely. knowledge so i think these two elements of pursuing theoretical physics and also using data come available now european southern observatory has already set up a database which mm-hmm. can be accessed anywhere in the world by any astronomer so these kind of facilities helps you to do that and then you can always as invite astronomers from the best astronomers from including from india and ask them to teach and create a department here but because the most important thing of an astronomy education is that it really enriches and fascinates youngsters Definitely. and it also molds them into a way of thinking mm-hmm. which professionally becomes very useful i have followed astronomy but not necessarily an astronomer today mm-hmm. but that astronomy background really help me to orient myself to several challenges in future whether it is related to the system engineering or building a satellite or running the india space program itself okay so last question uh, what are some of the key messages that you'd like to give the students here at manipal dubai campus well i i would like to say that this, this institution is to prepare them for a future life so they need not think that they need to assimilate everything that is possible to be done here mm-hmm. but what is important is to take it as a exercise in liberal education mm-hmm. and a liberal education allows you to think independently and cast away prejudices and dogma so practice that part of it and go into the world fully confident to face the challenges because of the type of challenges you met in fulfilling your educational program and secondly also learn to understand the world around you by methods which are scientific and therefore create a scientific temper in yourself and finally make sure that you are a first rate professional and you are second to none and never nurture a feeling then i am second to somebody you are always you that is all your determination to do and be front ranking and anybody who practices it really becomes front ranking and you yourself have an example in nadella who became yeah. now the top most man 
So, I think it is all the question of courage of conviction. So, have that. Thank you very much, sir. It was indeed a pleasure speaking to you. And uh, that was Dr. Kasturi Rangan. Uh, we hope to have him again in our studio soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you.